Hi everyone, my name is Ben and I'm an engineer working on Dagster. Today, along with Nick, I'm excited to share our new data ingestion as code functionality for our Airbyte and Fivetran integrations. This feature allows you to manage your Fivetran and Airbyte connections without leaving your Python code base. This approach provides a whole host of benefits to teams both large and small, including faster spin-up, letting you bypass time-consuming and often error-prone UI interactions, the ability to version your assets alongside the rest of your Python code, and the corresponding capability to make changes with confidence, including a full dev cycle of reviewing, merging, and reverting changes as needed. And finally, native integration with Dagster assets, making it easy to connect ETL ingestion with any upstream or downstream dependencies. Let's take a look at what this looks like using Airbyte. To get started, we'll go ahead and spin up Airbyte locally using Docker Compose. Here we have our empty Airbyte instance. Let's get started by syncing some data from GitHub to Snowflake. We'll do this using the traditional UI-based flow. We'll start by choosing our source type. Here we'll use GitHub. And then we'll input some credentials and other config information. Then we have to do the same for the destination. Finally, we have to manually select the list of data streams to sync. This process gets unwieldy as the number of sources and destinations grows, and modifying live connections in the absence of versioning can be a nerve-wracking affair. Let's see what it looks like defining that same connection in Python code. We'll head over to our editor, where we have a bare-bones Dagster repository. Here, we have an Airbyte resource that's pointing at our local Airbyte instance. We'll go ahead and define an Airbyte connection object. We'll provide a name, and then define the source and destination using typed Python classes, which are automatically generated from Airbyte spec files. We'll input config, passing credentials from the environment. Then we'll specify the list of streams to sync, including the sync mode. And finally, we'll tell Dagster to load this connection. Let's see how we can load that connection, which we defined in Python code, into our Airbyte instance. In our terminal, we can run Dagster Airbyte check, pointing it at our Dagster repository, to generate a diff between the config that we've defined locally and what's live in our Airbyte instance. Here, we can see we're creating GitHub source, a Snowflake destination, and our GitHub to Snowflake connection. If we instead run Dagster Airbyte apply, this will reconcile the changes, applying our config and generating our connection in our Airbyte instance. After a couple of moments, we can go back to Airbyte and refresh, and we'll see the connection we defined in Python code. If we move over to our Dagster instance and reload our asset definitions, we can see a new set of software-defined assets associated with the tables that Airbyte's generating in our destination in Snowflake. If we click on them, we even get metadata, such as the table schema that Airbyte's going to generate once we run a sync. Selecting our assets, we can go ahead and kick off a materialization, which under the hood is going to kick off a sync of the Airbyte connection. With our Airbyte ingestion represented as software-defined assets, it's easy for us to orchestrate any downstream dependencies. For example, we can easily add some downstream dbt computations that depend on the data that Airbyte loads into Snowflake. We hope this feature makes managing ingestion easy for practitioners, whether they're building new platforms or managing existing ones. This is functionality, which brings Dagster into new territory. So I'll hand it off to Nick to discuss how we're thinking about this. Thanks, Ben. That was an awesome demo. Uh, first of all, for those who don't know me, my name is Nick Schrock. I'm the CTO and founder of Elemental. And what Ben demonstrated here today was not just a feature of a couple of integrations, although what features they were, but we really think it's a massive leap forward for practitioners in the modern data stack. So why do we think that? Well, what, dem what this demo showed is that now ingestion tools can be a first-class citizen in your engineering workflow. You can manage their behavior in modern typed Python. You can manage change with source control and get all the associated benefits, CICD. You can review changes. You can roll them back. You can test them. You can build your own abstractions on top of them. And Dagster remains the source of truth for your asset definitions rather than having them be defined as state in a managed service or app. You know, this is the way that engineers want to work. 
But this will not end with Airbyte, Fivetran, and other ingestion tools. There are and will be other managed services that define and control the behavior of asset definitions within their tool. The question is, how do you want to manage change with those tools? In other words, you know, what manages the managed services? Let's start with our fundamental assumptions. You know, we at Dagster believe a few things, and our work is centered around these beliefs. You know, Dagster is for those, and we believe, that data management is a software engineering discipline. And that means that all data assets should be defined in software, meaning code, because data assets are fundamentally business logic. And this change in these systems, because it's software, should be managed to the software engineering lifecycle. So how does that apply to these ingestion tools and other managed services? Well, let's talk about this device. You know? So if you believe that data management is a software engineer- engineering discipline, you shouldn't be using your mouse and pointing and clicking around a UI to m- make production changes and deploy them. <clears throat> you know, Put another way, a data practitioner should not be forced to point and click in a UI to make changes to and deploy business logic. It's incredibly dangerous and fragile. A lot of this work actually stemmed from our own internal data platform experience. We extensively used ingestion tools, and it became increasingly scary and nerve-wracking to make changes to our own injection logic, ingestion logic. Because if someone screwed that up and mistyped something or clicked the wrong thing, how do you roll that back? How do you figure out what happened? How do you figure out who did it? Maybe you have an in-app audit feature that may or may not be complete, but even if that exists, it's totally disconnected from the rest of your processes. You know, and additionally, everything that's encoding your ingestion tool is completely interconnected to what is going on in the rest of your platform. You, know, you have downstream computations that are dependent on it. So we really wanted to manage this with code. Well, isn't this infrastructure's code? And in fact, that's a common, you know, held belief, and it's a reasonable assumption. You know, this is, in fact, a discussion on one of Airbyte's forums, and they plainly say, we would like to be able to manage and update our data sync operations as code which is exactly what we just showed you. So we should just use Terraform, right? And nope, we don't think so. Let's talk about why for a second. So Terraform is a bespoke custom DSL designed for managing infrastructure. You know, And it was designed so that infrastructure engineers could set up load balancers, EC2 instances, databases, and the like. It's at a fundamentally different layer in the stack, and it's designed for a completely different persona. It's for infrastructure not business logic. And as a result, we don't think a data practitioner should be forced to learn it in order to define data assets, right? They shouldn't have to learn this completely foreign tool chain and language to make changes to what is fundamentally business logic. And then furthermore, it's a tool, Terraform, that has no knowledge of the rest of your data platform and assets. It's a completely siloed black box. You know, how does one declare a dependency on an entity defined in Terraform? You can't. You'd have to double encode it. You have to write it in Terraform and then probably write it again in your orchestrator and then set dependencies on it. You know, this is not great. So we think that one, data practitioners should use their lingua franca, Python, to define their data assets, even if they live in an ingestion tool. And we think it should be done in the context of the orchestrator. So why the orchestrator? Well, one, we believe that The orchestrator is the ultimate source of truth for defining and operating your data assets. It's where all your dependencies are defined, and it's where all those dependencies are enforced because it's the orchestrator that enforces the order of execution. And it's that single operational pane of glass for your entire data team. You know, in our view, additionally, the orchestrator is at the center of your data team's engineering and deployment lifecycle. It's where everything has to come together. As a result, we think it's very natural for ingestion tools and other managed services to be peers to DBT, Spark, Python-driven assets, and all the other tools and have a single cohesive workflow and system for defining your data platform. So thanks for your time, and thanks for coming to Dexter Day.